another day of rumors and not a lot of facts. Still no comment from the administration that the school will terminate its football program. This board of trustees is hell bent on closing this program down. They want to destroy this university. That's that's the bottom line. The president is considering canceling one of the best and cheapest ways to market its university, its school. I, that just makes no sense. Football is the driving force to undergraduate growth. It wouldn't make common sense and it wouldn't make economic sense. The 2014-15 academic year will be our final year of competition in football. It's a great travesty for our city. You want to be in a campus in a major metropolitan area, no football team. And that just makes no sense. This is a big emotional issue for me as well as other alumni of the university. I am fully committed to UAB through thick and thin, always have been. Go! Go! We will not stop fighting and we want to say thank you to yourself. Thank you, UAB. CSS submits its final report and insists football can thrive. Given the broad base, of support. Never before seen. As of today, we are taking steps to reinstate the football rifle and bowling program. Yeah! We plan for so much more than just football. The wait, the anticipation, all the hard work that we had to do to actually get to this moment. Just so proud of them and, and, and you know, just uh, hate that we're going through this. Are you bitter? You know, it's hard not to be upset. I got coaches and families and players and it's, you know, we're, you know, we're hurt. It was terrible. I mean, I don't think there's any way around it. You know, it was terrible for guys that were leaving. Your legacy is now changed and, uh, you know, I fought to help make this a, a national team. It's kind of hard to believe that your, your team's about to be canceled. You know what I mean? Like, that's not something that you just hear every day. You know? This is a school, we're a Division I program. Like, I've never heard of that happening. No one's gonna take away a Division I program, you know? So I didn't, I didn't hear anything to, after the Southern Miss game, then when I heard it then, and then December 2nd came around and the announcement was actually made, it was like, wow, this is a real moment, you know? I thought it was dreaming, but it was actually real. They all have to start over again. Don't know where it's, what school they're gonna go to or nothing like that. I mean, it was devastating. It was, it's not on the same level as like, someone dying but it it you know tears are running down everyone's faces you know a lot of those guys I haven't seen since might not ever see again and it just felt like it felt like if, if you had a family and like a tragedy happened and your family just split and you didn't see a lot of those people that's that's really what it felt like we just leaned on each other I feel like after that meeting a few of the guys kind of just hung out we just talked about stuff and then guys start making big decisions within the next 24 hours after that uh, announcement because so many coaches were just swarming in here. If you would have been around the city, like it was mayhem because instantly all of our phones started ringing from different schools, coaches were up here and hotels, you know, coming up to say, come see me in this room. It, it, was, it was weird, like phones were just ringing, coaches, you look around the city, go walk around campus, you'd see coaches with all these different uh, teams and gears on. A lot of schools who who pursued me and they was like, we need you to come, we want you to come now. I was like, I just can't make a decision in two, three days, like, I want to come pay for your university. I woke up out of my sleep one morning and the coach was like, can you meet me right now? I was like, I don't even know who you are. He was like, I'm, I'm, I'm outside of the library, come meet me, I want to talk to you. I was like, I mean, I guess so, I got to do that now, I don't really have anywhere to go. So Jordan Howard, I remember they were like, Texas called him, they were like, uh, Baylor called him. I was like, man. The day after UAB decided to end football, students continued to question the move. This is Alabama. We're in the South. This is a football state. The reasoning behind the shutdown that was published in the paper and was pretty much the communicated line was that, you know, financially the program was not viable. The Board of Trustees uh, and Dr. Ray Watts 
had decided that we would operate as a business and if we operated at a loss, we couldn't be here. The reason largely for the, the problems, the issues with the small crowds and the lack of success in recruiting was the facilities. And I had heard over time that the university athletics had not been supported. Most of us said, boy, that's, that's, that's a shame that it shut down. Uh, but kind of accepted the fact that it was shutting down as opposed to really looking into the real issues around it. University commissioned a report and it's been infamously known as the Carr Report. And the Carr Report was a study that was commissioned by the university to just look at the overall viability of the entire athletic department. I think there's a, a some more subjective things that need to be considered. You know, I look around and I don't really call these guys my teammates, they're more of my brothers. Um, you know, there's nothing I wouldn't do for these guys and I know they feel the same about me. And I know everyone in this room right now supports UAB and this is, this is UAB football family. The decision by UAB President Ray Watts to terminate the football program caused protests by many supporters. I tell people all the time about UAB fans that We've all got all kind of different fans, but this is, a, this is an intelligent group. UAB football is important, and it wasn't, you know, we weren't alone, there were others. You know, there were a lot of people that recognized that UAB football um, needed to come back, that we, we could raise the money. If we were gonna bring the football program back, we had to raise 18 to $20 million, and we raised that money literally from the community. In May, the UAB Football Foundation starts raising money. So far, they've raised more than $22 million. Credit needs to go to Ray Watts. He got discredited a lot. A lot of credit needs to go to Ray Watts for A, having the courage to bring football back, and, and two, really rallying the troops and rallying the Board of Trustees and working with us. Given the broad base of support never before seen, as of today, we are taking steps to reinstate the football, rifle, and bowling programs. Yeah. We saw the importance of, of this game we play to this community, to these students, and I was so happy for these people who had fought so hard. And now, okay, let's give them something to really be happy about. When the announcement came back, I hear we're going to uh, reinstate it in two years. Well, we got an uphill battle to climb. I used to think about my teammates every day. Well, I know people are going to go back. And I, I kept waiting. I waited the options for so long about, about going back or not going back. It just kind of shocks me sometimes because, you know, you get them and they come back and say, hey, everything we talked about, everything you said, for them to believe that and see that, um, you know, that means, that means everything to me because that's why we do this. First, you got to become a team for real because, like, you know, we hadn't played in games together. Then you got to get people to buy in. Then you got to get leaders. Some of those guys, like, the leaders on the other team are still leaders on this team. Like, at first, our DBs wouldn't hang out with our receivers or vice versa, you know, but now it's just everybody. Everybody clicks with everybody. It's a brotherhood. There was 22 guys on our team at one point. That's all we had. And then after a semester, a wave of guys came in. We had to take the rules as they were written for everybody else and, and build a team over a two-year period. We had to focus on a facility. Then we started to hear about the blueprints of the facility. We finally got a turf practice where we can actually practice on the field safe only. We're not here to go at each other. We're here to make history together. We're here to bond and do stuff that we've never done before. Spring practice this year has a whole new meaning as a countdown clock to the 2017 season opener is more real than ever. Our goal is to continue the momentum that we have with the community and really all the constituencies that helped to bring football back. The support that our fans and everybody gave, to, especially to bring this program back, is everything. I mean, like, without them, we don't have this program back. Without our fans and all the, the protests and everything, without our alumni coming in, chipping in, like, we don't have UAB football. The whole reason it's back is because of the city of Birmingham. The business community and the people of this community were committed to UAB as an institution, committed to our city's well-being and for a collaborative, uh, constructive partnership to help UAB and our city really move forward and become the best it can be.
This is a place that I chose to be and we chose to come here because it has got unlimited potential. Um, you know, I didn't make this a great academic institution. I didn't build Birmingham, but we're sure going to use it. Everyone who has been part of this program have been waiting for this day. Leading up to the spring game, we just didn't know what to expect. And then when we pulled up, we didn't expect to see as many people at the spring game. Like, we had to open up more parking lots for people to actually park. It was, like, amazing to, to see the support and stuff that um, people was, you know, pouring out for this program. It was like a real game day for us. It was unreal to seeing, seeing how many fans came to the walk, seeing everything. It just, I could see the look in everybody's eyes that they just, all the hard work and all the effort that we had put in was finally coming. Seeing all those people, you know, for a spring game, you know, when we first got here, there probably weren't too many people, like in the stands, period. But for a spring game, there's 8,000 people. That was probably the, the biggest joy of the whole spring day. You're not just playing for, you know, uh, just the university, you're playing for the whole city, you're playing for everyone who is fighting for you, the people fighting for you on Twitter that's never been to Birmingham in their life, never been to the state of Alabama, tweeting stuff about it. You're playing for so much more than just football. I've never been through anything like this. So when I walk through the office and I see that ticking clock, it's just, it makes me so anxious. I, I'm just so ready to be back on the football field. All I've ever wanted to do in my life was win. And when we do win and I, and I, can, I can look somebody in the eye and be like, oh yeah, I built that, you know what I mean? Like, I was a part of the blueprint that brought back UAB. We're playing for our family, we're playing for the city. We're protecting something. You know, we're not, we're not going in there to fight for ourselves. We're not going in there to, you know, boost up ourselves. We're, we're protecting something. A lot of players when they go to college, you want to be able to, put, uh, be able to put their mark on a program. Well, this is like all of our opportunity to really put a stamp and a mark on UAB. This 17 group is going to set the standard, and I, and I want them to know that. Um, that's why we say you are playing for a lot more people than just yourself. This is your legacy. You're already winners. You know, I, I, somebody said the other day, well, you know, we need to win next year to, um, to really make this thing right. I said, well, we've already won. Mm -hmm.